If you want to lose money selling your house, be reactive. But if you want to make money, watch this video. Welcome back to the Hatch Homes Group Market Update. This week again you have Johnny and Shay. And last week we promised you a how. How to properly plan for your home going on the market. And here's when we're going to go in depth on it. Shay has over 10 years experience as a listing agent and he's done had a quite successful career. And so he's going to bring you some valuable insight to that about being proactive and not reactive. You want to maximize your home's investment. You want to make as much money as possible off that investment. And so you don't want to put it up on a whim. You want to properly plan and work with people, work with a team that can help you and set you up for success. So on that note, talking about being proactive and not reactive, Shay, yeah. how can people be proactive and not reactive? I mean, there's multiple steps, but the first one I always look at is pre-inspection. A lot okay. of people, a lot of agents, and, and some people are really uncomfortable with that idea just because whatever you find out during that pre-inspection, you have to disclose. But yeah. I'd rather know what I'm going into than be surprised. You know, it's just, for me, the transaction's already kind of stressful. So being aware of everything that could come up is just so much more planful. Yeah. You know, so the reason for the pre-inspection too is that a lot of times that you can do those items like you can find out if there's anything that's serious. You know, I'm big on structural safety and health. So if like a roof needs to be replaced, if we have any issues with the sewer line or anything that is more that's going to be a kind of a costly item, it's nice to know how much those items are going to run too because then you're not surprised by this big, you know, price, heavy price tag thing or heavy, let me say, it's good to know, you know, that way you can be more mindful with your budget and understand that, you know, these big dollar items that could come up. Yeah. So by understanding that, you can kind of really budget and go into your transaction kind of financially understanding what you might net at the very end, which is really important. Yeah. And then also I feel like the the transaction can kind of get bumpy and you can get into situations where you have fail sales too, which you don't want. A fail sale, it's just a big, you know, black eye on the, you know, the the home itself and this kind of gives it a negative Right. Every yeah. well, every buyer when they see back on market, they yeah. they they call their agent. And they go, "What's wrong with it?" Right. And it could have been. It could be back on market for exactly. anything. Exactly. But they automatically go. As humans, we automatically go. You know, worst case scenario. So yeah, you're kind of talking absolutely. about, like, knowing the landmines where they are instead of just stepping on them. Instead of just getting an inspection during a transaction, and all of a sudden you've got these high ticket items. But what about if like someone's like, oh, I don't have money to do yeah. a roof repair, or a $10,000 sewer repair if we do a pre-inspection. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's a very valid question. So a lot of times, at least maybe getting a quote is a good idea because then you kind of can control the price, right? You don't have to like let them go out because now it's come up, it's become an issue, and now they're gonna want to get their people, and they still might, but at least then you have a baseline to work from. Yeah. And then also, sometimes contractors will do it where they get paid out of the uh, closing proceeds. Okay. So it just depends. You know, I mean, I have some great contractors. A lot of them I've worked with will do that. So, you know, you get a pre-inspection, you get the report, you get to see some of these things. Then what? What would you do with the potential seller with that report? Well, as you know, too, right? We work with buyers. We're not just working with sellers. Mm -hmm. And we've come across a lot of objections from buyers. So the nice thing about having that information is that we, now we understand what we can, be, what we should be actually focusing on. Some mm -hmm. of the cosmetic stuff, not really important, right? But some of the things like interior paint colors or, you know, like maybe some deferred issues with plumbing or stuff like that, the, a lot of those things kind of scare people away. So we really want to get in front of those things or at least have an answer to their question. Yeah. So that's really important, I feel like. Yeah, we can kind of help them understand. We see it through the buyer's eyes. We can let them know. Right hey, this is going to be an issue or not. And Absolutely. So you mentioned, you mentioned like painting and stuff like that. That could be interior, that can be exterior. Right. We know that often in the Pacific Northwest, yeah. we have a lot of rain, yeah, absolutely. especially depending on the season. So if people are planning and they're wanting to paint inside, well, especially outside, they need to plan that. Absolutely. And then if they're wanting to paint inside, paint stinks. So if you paint... <laughs> Yeah. If you paint like yeah. the week before you're going on market or something like that, yeah. buyers come through and think it reeks. Yeah, it smells so important, right? Yeah. You know, by getting in front of that and letting that smell dissipate, mm -hmm. really, I feel like creates a better experience. Like this is dating. You want your first impression to be the best, right? And yeah. if you come in and you're just smacked with this 
really strong odor of paint, it's, yeah, it's really off-putting. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to shift gears a little bit. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about like marketing and knowing your audience. Like, like, right. A lot of people have said like, don't take cell phone photos, which we know <laughs> look like trash, yeah. but it's not absolutely. just about taking a few good photos of a house that still with good photos, the story can be lost of that property. Right. So what would you do or what do you do in helping someone who's planning to market their home? Yeah, I mean, again, it comes back to this proactive versus reactive, right? So for me, you know, being proactive is understanding your audience, right? Understanding how, what's, in, what's so um, great about the property, having that time to kind of talk with your sellers and have them do that research and write something for me, right? Give me a little bit of understanding why they love the property, right? All these things take time, right? And then also like researching the market, researching that type of property. I have a property that I just walked recently that is a very unique property, you know, on acreage and this beautiful scenery with this river running through it. And I looked at the past information on it. It was on market for 800 plus days. It sat there forever, price reductions. And a lot of it, I looked back at it, there was no story. There was no information about the property. I had no idea what I was walking to. I was really pleasantly surprised. And so really like for them, they're like, well, what's, why is this so important? And I'm like, well, because now if you are able to illustrate it through drone, through you know a, a video of someone with you know, with a gimbal walking through the forest, right? Mm -hmm. You know, walking the structure, having you know Matterport and all these different things that we can do these days. You know, when it comes to marketing, really paint the picture of the property, paint you know, kind of give someone an idea of the tranquility of the property. And that's not going to be for every property, right? Some of these homes are in you know more of like a cul-de-sac, but still, there's still things about the cul-de-sac, right? Mm -hmm. Or something in you know a suburb, right? There's parks, there's things we can illustrate, things that we love about the neighborhood, but we have to be really mindful and planful. So you you mentioned first impressions with like at like the dating reference when right. it came to sense and presenting your best. How important would you put staging or the first walk through from a buyer? I mean, to me, it's important, right? I mean, I, and it doesn't matter what size. I think every size structure, condo, big homes, anything, it's really important to kind of create a sense of home, you know, but not too cluttered, right? And so we really do suggest a lot of times removing personal pictures, personal items, kind of decluttering, making the space feel open, not chaotic, right? And that can take time. It does take time. People accumulate a lot of stuff. I mean, I have a client, it, like, it took her probably about a month. I mean, she called herself a maximalist. Mm -hmm. You know, she and I and I loved it. It was a great term because she loved collecting and she had a lot of great things, but it just made the space feel just really packed and it was a beautiful space. Yeah. So I really I mean, for me, it was like really kind of allowing someone to walk through the property and see it as their own, not somebody else's yeah. home. Right. And it comes back, like you said, that first impression. Yep. If they can't see themselves in it or if it feels too, you know, like tight in spaces, because some of these spaces are really big, but they just have so much in there. Yeah. And again, great furniture and everything. It's their, their items. That's great. But like having a stager come through that can either help them kind of pick items that are really it, that they should keep around and what I'm to put away and we can just use their furniture for staging. Or sometimes we have to bring in furniture, right? Sometimes we just take everything out and really bring in like a new, fresh, more modern look to it. Yeah. Right? It kind of depends on the space and on the situation. That's what I love about our team is that we can have somebody through our team or through our connections come through with us and kind of help give that eye. I don't know if you, I'm sure you have run across this a lot. I've heard a few times, some people are like, oh, well, I like to have, I want to have, just have my home empty because then they can picture their own stuff in it. And that's actually, the total opposite. People yeah. walk into an empty space. It's it's echoey. It's loud, right? It sounds Absolutely. funky. And then they don't picture their stuff because they if they see a couch there and an end table, even if it's different than their couch, they can picture their couch there. Right. But if it's Absolutely. just totally empty, they're just not that many people can picture it. Yeah, it's hard to see how the space can be used. Yeah. And by putting staging in it, it really gives you a, a picture of how that space is used and how it can be used, right? Yes. And I feel like when it's empty, it, some people have a hard time, and it's no knock on it, you know, people, but there are some people who just have a hard time seeing a space and what it, how it can be used yeah. and how the furniture can be laid, you know, situated, right? Yes. So I feel like, and honestly, like that echoey thing too, and that coldness, it just yeah. feels, it doesn't feel inviting. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, that's why I'm against the virtual staging. Uh, I've is, done it and it looks great on photos, but it doesn't. But then you get there and you're disappointed. It's, it doesn't present well. Right. You yeah. want 
Yeah. We want people to fall in love online, then we yeah, want them absolutely. to fall in love in person, and then if it's getting appraised, we want the appraiser yeah. to like it. And too, I'll you tell know? you, I mean, with all the listings I've done, I will tell you time and time again that staging staged homes sell faster. You know, it's like an unstaged home or too cluttered home just takes time. It's just really, it's, it's a very fascinating thing, and I know it's a cost, but I think it's so important, and that's really honestly why it's so important to our team it, you know, with staging, it's because it really does sell a property. It really does bring buyers, you know, to the table. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned cost. Let's go into pricing strategy. All right. Knowing the market and all that stuff with the property. Yeah, and price, you know, people think it's really easy, right? We just come up with these prices, right, based off of whatever information. I mean, a lot of it takes a lot of research. You know, I've had properties that, like the one I was talking about earlier with the stream, it's going to take me a week or two weeks of just researching, right? because it's such a unique property. It has so many unique features. And it really, honestly, I'm gonna lean into the team. The team is such a great team to solve the knowledge, but that's gonna take time again. So that's mm -hmm. really important. Also kind of understanding seasonality, right? Yeah. You know, the springtime, hot, right? I mean, we still have over the, historical over the last couple of years, some kind of weird springs, and they've been a little slower than other springs, but spring markets, they, I mean, between like, I would say February and probably like, early August are really your window, right? So really understanding the markets, understanding market times, understanding the comps, understanding the area, all of that's so important and it just takes a lot of planning, Yeah. right? I mean, and I don't wanna like rush a house to market just to get it on the market because I'm not really servicing my client and really advocating for them if I'm just like, hey, let's throw it on right at Christmas time. Yeah. Like the worst, right? Let's let's price high and go on the week <laughs> yeah. Thanksgiving weekend. Right. So <laughs> pricing and timing is so important. You know, and I there's always this graph, right? At the high end of the graph, you're gonna sell everybody's property, right? It's gonna sit and sit. And you're gonna chase that market downward. And sometimes a lot of times if you price it too high, right, you'll end up lower than what I would have suggested on the low end. Yeah. Right? So really, it's really important. Pricing is so important, right? If you price it too low, you're not getting the greatest return either, right? So we really don't want to price it there. You know, we can create some activity through pricing it too low, but I feel like ultimately pricing it right, mm -hmm. you know, and we that, and again, pricing it right looks different for every property, but you know, and that's something we'll talk through with our clients, but putting it at that, you'll get activity. You know, homes won't sit on the market. You won't have to do price reduction, right? I just feel like it's, it's really beneficial to take that time, and again, be mindful and proactive to look at the pricing at that time, and especially in the market time too, because if you look at like pricing a home in the spring and summer, it's gonna be a little different than if you price it around the holidays. Absolutely. Right? We have to be super aggressive around the holidays to really draw people in. And honestly, you have less buyers a lot of times too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are trying to get into homes before school gets in or before holidays. So really, if you're gonna do that, you really do need to be super aggressive. So that changes the pricing and again, strategy and planning. All right, well, we don't wanna give away all the secrets over yeah. the video, but we think that's a good help, helps you get into the idea of why properly strategizing is so important and how it can help you maximize your sale. So again, if you're ready to start your strategy session, reach out to us, send us a message, and we can get you going on that. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.